if it doesn't work it doesn't work okay so uh last week i left you with a question can anybody remember the question <laughs> Monique, take the mic. It was, um, how do you deal with conflict and criticism in your culture? Yeah, all the fussing and fighting. How do you deal with it? Nobody likes to be criticised. Most people, apart from tough guy here, uh, don't like conflict. <laughs> how do you deal with it in your culture? And then we'll discuss... Uh, some aspects of Australian culture. I say aspects because, of course, we're dealing with people, individuals, but there is a, a general consideration in Australia. So, Monique, you answered the, you asked the question, which is kind of the answer to my question. Um, did you think about it? Have you had any ideas? Uh, is it an issue? Yeah, but actually it's a, it is but uh, but also it's not an easy question to to answer because i mean it's hard <laughs> i mean because always it depends on the on the person so uh i would say that we we know that we uh, the best way to to solve a conflict okay starting from conflict it's by talking to that person uh through communication so uh, I would say that that would be the best way <laughs> just to solve uh, a conflict. Criticism, I think, is another another thing. And as you say, in general, people don't like to be criticized by anyone else. So um, I think that we should be careful about this sort of things because we need to know how to, to tell cert uh, certain things because otherwise we can be offensive or we can just um, hurt someone so um, I would say that we are in general in my country we are a little bit sensitive <laughs> so we need to know how to uh, how to say or how to tell things you know in order to um, to not harm anyone so uh, I for example uh, I think that some people it's really straightforward when it comes to 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 say a, a critic but but again, it's, it depends on the person. So sometimes uh, it's uh, it could be or it won't be a problem. But maybe <laughs> if uh, that person is too sensitive, it will cause uh, some troubles. So it's hard. It's hard just to generalize this uh, this answer. So I would say that I I I I don't know. It depends. I would say it very much depends. But I think. Oh, by the way. Um, so as not to hurt someone if you hurt someone it implies physically okay always mm, it can't yeah um i don't want to hurt you it could be um so if you're in a relationship that... and somebody says that to yeah. you then obviously they don't want to hurt your feelings but to make it clear because in an organization um you might have some fussing and fighting so we often add the word feelings just to clarify we're not talking about i don't oh, want to beat it. you up <laughs> yeah yeah because i, I was thinking about her that i always uh i've heard that that verb before but yeah you, you're yeah right. i mean there's the song i didn't want feeling. to hurt you i didn't want to make you cry and we know that that's about relationships exactly. and therefore feelings but if it's not in implicit that we're talking about relationships and feelings then we say you know you don't want to hurt someone's feelings when you criticize them or when there's conflict especially you'd need to add the word feelings because conflict can be a physical conflict as well um obviously you know that's to be avoided at all times <laughs> especially in the workplace okay uh -huh. so you tend to be a little bit touchy-feely then yeah, yeah okay. I, I would say that, that in general, I'm trying just to generalize, uh, you know, but uh, I would say that we care about that, you know, I mean, yeah, it's because I think that we are, yeah, like uh, we feel everything, you know, like uh, because we are passionate about everything, so if you say something against me, I'll take a look, not like, uh, you know, you want to, I don't know, to make a good critic but maybe you want to i don't know to 
I don't know, to damage me and somehow, you know, so anyway, I, I think uh, in general, I, I would say that is pretty much what we are, the way we are. Okay, I mean, yeah, you've, I mean, in any organisation, there has to be some kind of criticism in how you deal with people. Nobody can be brilliant all the time. Uh, and that can, the criticism can lead to conflict or just a clash of personalities can lead to conflict. My hubby always says, if you're a real professional, you can work with anybody. Doesn't mean you like them. You don't have to like them, but you need to be able to work with them vice versa as well they need to be able to work with you if you're a professional um traum uh, my <clears throat> contribution to this theme would be if a person is not ready um to uh, get to the point of a solution then it is it is uh, very uh, difficult to get uh, to satisfy the whole group you know oh. some people they even don't like to uh to get a, they come to get to come to a result i mean um uh, yeah maybe they are not ready maybe maybe uh, they need more than one meetings or so um but uh yeah i, I think we all should be civilized uh that we don't as monic said that we don't uh, do any one harm and uh, but in, in in some groups especially in in sports or even in uh, in the community when people are come in the in the office and they are angry because of something uh, yeah it it's depends uh, on the other uh, the other uh, the other person who works in the in the office is he or, or is, he, is he or she easy to offend or do they uh do they hold it or do they um do they uh extend the attacks attacks you know people are very different um, but most of the people are uh, nice and like to uh to focus to come to a solution for the problem but some don't that's very true i think that's very true. true true in society as well um now <laughs> there is a lovely saying um by albert hubbard okay uh which i agree with and um i think what you wrote what you said about in a community I and mean, i try very hard not to criticize but of course as the teacher here, I have to be critical of people's pronunciation, English spelling, grammar. <laughs> but I try to be nice. And I would say, to, if you want to avoid criticism, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. And that's what um, Albert Hubbard said. And you, that's the way to avoid criticism. And no organisation, no, no society wants that. We could all stay at home, not do anything, and no one will criticise us. Except they would, because then they'd say, oh, she never goes out, uh, or, oh, she's a lock-in, or <laughs> everybody will criticise everything. <laughs> okay, Reems wants to join us as well. Herding cats. <laughs> okay. Now, there is, the, but there are ways of criticising people. Now, you've heard of Mark Twain? You've all heard of Mark Twain? Yeah? I know that I know nothing. Yes. <laughs> I think we could all benefit from knowing that. <laughs> you know more when you know you know you don't know everything. Well, Mark Twain, I mean, we've been reading his books in the past and um, he's a very witty writer, uh, but he's, he also had a darker side. A critical side. I don't know if you've ever read this particular criticism. We've read it with Eleanor once, but um, would somebody like to read that out loud? Just type MIC. Okay, Monique, you win. <laughs> I can see people right. typing. I was, right. I, was no, yeah. I was waiting. No one else. So, okay. Well, Marco is typing. Um, Reem, hello. Hi, Reem. I hope you can hear us. Um, 
Okay, so Monique, read that out. It's not the nicest criticism ever. <laughs> okay, so uh, I haven't any right to criticize books, and I don't do I don't do expect when I hate them. I often want to criticize Jane Austen, but her books mm, maiden. Uh, made me so that I can't conceal my frenzy from the reader and therefore I have to stop every time I begin every time I read Pride and Prejudice I want to dig her up and beat her over the skull with her own shin bone oh my gosh <laughs> charming eh? <laughs> yeah. okay it's actually madden, madden to madden somebody like the mat? Um, like to make them annoyed to the point of being angry maybe uh, you can find the English pronunciation maddening. You've got a verb maddening. <laughs> I know, Traum. <laughs> so, um, he was using humour, I hope, but uh, also, you know, really expressing what he meant. And this is something that Australians will do, which can be very maddening because... Sometimes when an Australian criticises you um, or wants to have some kind of argument with you, they're so laid back, it's very difficult sometimes to realise that they're actually being critical. You just think they're joking because they use humour a lot. And it's a little bit inappropriate sometimes if you're not used to that kind of use of humour. So, um... <laughs> Okay, if people could type Mike to do some reading, M-I-C, those of you who would like to read this morning or this afternoon. Okay, Traum, you're up first. So, Traum, if you'd like to read that. Of course. <clears throat> in Australia, critic criticism is expressed so indirectly that quite often only people who are familiar with the culture understand its meaning. There are indications of criticism, but most of the time it is implied rather than direct. Okay, so here we have this um, implicit, yeah, something implied. Um, you have to read the way it's being said, the words that are being used, and you have to think about your behaviour that might have brought about that reaction. It's more like a reaction than a direct criticism. Okay, so, which brings me to that word. Um, we do say critics. Critic. A critic. Everyone's a critic. But criticism. Okay, do you want to try it, Traum? Criticism. Yes. Criticism. Yeah, Criticism. and the verb is to criticise. To criticise. That's it. Good. Well done. And then indirectly, not indi, indi. So oh. you've got direct, direction. Think about those words. Sometimes they can give you a clue. Direct, direction, indirect. Yes, of course. Okay. okay. Indirect, not indirect. <laughs> Indirectly, <Directly>. yeah. <laughs> it's not the worst German, mistake. People would German understand. Brain, Your E's and I's, yeah. <laughs> I have the same problem the other way around, so I understand. <laughs> any questions? Any any feedback from that? Has anyone ever been the victim of such? I mean, it's not just the Australians. The Brits can do it too. Has anyone been at the receiving end of this? Uh, Monique, take the mic. Uh, I think that's another, another I, I would say another issue when we uh, manage uh, humor, when we want to say something about someone else. So it could be mean sometimes <laughs> because, uh, I don't know, when we use that, uh, it's like a, we feel that we are allowed to say a lot of things and we don't bother about the way we are telling things. So I think the, the effect or the result would be the same, you know, if that person is, cannot uh, handle it, uh, it would be just, um, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a, a mistake. Absolutely. And yeah, <laughs> I 
humor's really dangerous. It's it's fun and um, I love humor, but I've had to modify my humor um, in running the the network. When I first started, uh, I you know, people just didn't get it at all, and sometimes I'd upset people. I didn't mean to. I was trying to be funny. <laughs> And we have got a saying in English, by the way, are you trying to be funny? Uh, which means basically you're not. <laughs> yeah, indirect, implied criticism. OK, um, if you imply something, you're not saying it directly. And implied criticism can be very difficult to understand. So you can be saying really nice things to somebody and making suggestions <laughs> for improvement. And it's basically an implied criticism, just saying that, okay? Um, you don't come right out and say it though. You don't come right out and just say, oh, this is rubbish. You just say, oh, that's a good effort. <laughs> Why don't you do it this way next time? <laughs> it's really awful. OK, so have a look. I love Dilbert, by the way. So have a look at this um, Dilbert cartoon and you'll find um, a little conversation about this implied criticism. OK, so what's the implied criticism in the last frame of that cartoon? Could you repeat, Lynn? What, what's what the, the implied question? criticism in the last frame of the cartoon? A thing. When, uh, when the sign is said, thanks. He says, um, you're very rational today and they've already worked out, she's already worked out that when she, when he says something um, about someone else, it implies she's not that. So he says, Wally, you're very rational today. What does that imply about her? It implies... She's not being rational, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, are you saying I can offend you by complimenting other people? Yes. Wally, you're very rational today. In other words, he's deliberately now using that to offend her. <laughs> Implied criticism. Rather than turning to her and saying that's completely irrational, he's turning it around. Okay, any question? Maybe that's a little bit too much of a... <laughs> no, everything is totally different of, of the way of... of actual way uh, of actual way of talking, so everything is different. What he said, uh, it's quite opposite of it. So the point is... It's, yeah, he's I basically so. using... Sar and sarcasm is very dangerous. Sarcasm, yes. Yeah, exactly. sarcasm is really dangerous as well. Um, but uh, <laughs> like uh, you are great, uh, but actually uh, not you. <laughs> yeah, you're not. <laughs> is great. You said someone is great, but actually someone is awful. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like a friend saying to you, "Oh, Monique, if you like, I can you 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 bake a cake, Monique." Yeah. And your friend tastes the cake and then your your friend says, oh, oh, that's lovely. Why do, I tell you what, I'll give you my recipe. <laughs> it's delicious. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the implied criticism is my recipe is better than yours, okay? Exactly, yeah. I Without actually that. saying, oh, my goodness, I got, oh, this is horrible. Why don't you uh, not do that again? <laughs> it's true, but um, it, the, there's no direct insult to your cake, but you could you take heard, it. You heard my <laughs> I'm insulting your today. cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, 
next reader. Just type Mike if you would like to read. I'm being very egalitarian today. I'm being very nice and kind, letting you read if you want to. Come on, guys. Give it a go. Read, please. <laughs> Save time. It's just right up, wrapped in nice cellophane. Do you mean cellophane? Cellophane. Cellophane, yes. Yeah, cellophane. <laughs> oh, hang on. I can't, I can't spell it either. Cellophane, yes. Made pretty and wrapped in a ribbon. So, um, Marco, mm. just by way of you having typed, I'm going to get you to read next. So, <laughs> oh, okay, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I gotta take okay. readers where I can get them. Okay, so uh, an Australian principle is that, uh, in general, you do not say anything negative about or towards somebody else. If you do need to criticize somebody, the how is very important. Most of the time it is done very indirectly, not in the presence of others, and humor plays an important role. Very good. Nicely read. Criticize. Excellent. Well done. No corrections, you see? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Traum, take the mic. Um, did I get the point when uh, when they want to say us, to tell us that they say it directly to the to the person who is is, is meant? Yeah, the, basically okay. the idea is you don't criticize people in front of other people, not even at work. You don't do that. It's so rude to do. I don't do that, by the way. In that way, I'm quite Australian. Um, when I was a supervisor, I would never tell somebody off within the group, even in a group meeting. I would always... People hated me saying to them, oh, can I have a word with you? Because <laughs> they never knew if it was going to be praise or being told off, but I would never do it in front of people. Okay. Um, and it's not easy to do because you want to tell somebody, you need to correct somebody as quickly as possible. But I'd always take people to one side or into an office in order to do that. Okay. And the how and humour, which is, makes it, as I say, this indirect uh, criticism makes it quite difficult. So let's have an example. Um, Shiny, can you read today? <coughs> oh, are you okay? Just a, a little sentence? <coughs> okay, not if you're coughing, it's fine, don't worry. Then, Reem. Can you use your mic today? No, don't worry, Shine. No, no need to apologise. If you're coughing, you're coughing. Okay, Reem, here's your sentence. Okay, okay, we've got the same problem as last week, I'm afraid, Reem. Um, it does sound like you're using an industrial saw in your, in your house. So, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> okay, but I did hear you correct yourself, warning, to, to warn someone. Yeah, I, I can't hear you very well at all, Reem, I'm sorry. And also, I did unfortunately here B sounded very much like P so do be careful with the B sound okay okay B yeah you've got to when you're doing the B sound less air P 
he is what we call an explosive. It sort of like an explosion of air comes through your lips. P, and B is softer, less air, and a more relaxed mouth. B, B P. Okay. Now I know a lot of cultures have a problem with the B sound because it does not exist in their language. So it's something you have to practice. Practice makes perfect. And the two things you can use to practice B and P are tongue twisters. So Peter Piper, the tongue twister Peter Piper, that's very useful for the P sound. And the tongue twister Betty Botter, it's very useful for the B sound. Okay, I'll give you the list. Okay, so there's some tongue twisters there and you can re you can leave a recording as well. So try Peter Piper and Betty Botter. <laughs> and try and get the P and the B sorted in your head, okay? That's your homework, Reem. <laughs> Very good, well done. You're welcome. I'm sorry your connections, your, your, I don't know what's up with your sound card or your connection, but it's, yeah, it makes it a bit difficult, but. Okay, so any questions about um, this? Does everybody get it? Uh, why you seem to be sleeping well lately could be a warning. What do you mean? Will, will, uh, did we understand the meaning? Of, yes. What or? was the criticism? What What would you have? What because could you say more directly? You, <laughs> you came uh, like I'm late to work. Yeah, like, you were late. Don't, 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 <laughs> yes. Don't, okay. came late, don't came late anymore. <laughs> mm, it's not really <laughs> telling somebody to go to bed earlier, Tram. It's basically saying, Oi, you, you're late. Okay. By doing or by saying just the opposite. By saying something funny. Oh, you're sleeping well lately. And it might be accompanied by somebody looking at their watch. Okay. Uh, let's see if I've got my watch looking. Um, I'm not sure if I've got this one. Uh, so let's see if I can get this one. Hello, come on. Okay. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Monique, <laughs> I know you weren't late. Yeah. Actually, I can say it to Reem. I'll say it to Reem. Okay, hang on. Ah, oh, hello, Reem. <laughs> You've been sleeping well lately. <laughs> Because Reem was a little bit late. I, I don't criticise people for being late, though. I know. And she has to say, indeed. Indeed, indeed. yes. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of sarcasm. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that seam as well. Oh, you seem to be sleeping well lately. Um, so it is implied criticism with humour, but it's still criticism. It's still a warning, you know. Somebody has noticed you being late. Don't worry about being late to here. I know that you're all on different time zones and I just appreciate you being here. But um, yeah, if at work, come on, I'm not paying you to be here. So at work, people take a different view. Of course, you know, time is money. <laughs> Rima, take the mic. Yes, something similar when we, uh, when we come late to... Uh, it's like a joke or in a school or something. I yeah, it, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so many <laughs> years ago, like like uh, excuse and uh, what your boss or teacher would uh, tell you, like, what's the problem? It's flat tire on the tramway. You know, tramway doesn't use tire exactly. Because okay. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got the worst excuse ever and I believed it because I used to be very, very gullible. I, I would believe anything anybody ever told me. And one employee once said, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Because um, um, Shiny, you'd say, how do you reply, reply? Say sorry. Yes. I mean, you have to recognise it as criticism first, of course. So you wouldn't really say oh yeah, I've got a new bed. It's fantastic. Slip like a log. No, that's not the reply you want. <laughs> Unless you want to be sarcastic. 
<laughs> but yeah, you'd probably just say, oh, sorry, and then give your excuse to give your excuse to somebody. The traffic was terrible. It won't happen again. Um, because if you say to your boss, the traffic was terrible, you'd just say, well, get up earlier. It's always terrible. Get here on time. I'm paying you. Time is money. <laughs> but no, once somebody said to me, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I had to go to the doctors. A bee flew into my ear. And me, stupid, dumb cluck that I was. I was so concerned. Oh, are you all right? Do you want to go home? Blah, 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 blah. And about five years later, that person admitted to me it had been a complete and utter lie. So <laughs> don't use that one as an excuse with me. A bee flew into my ear. What a dumbo I am. <laughs> but it is a warning. You seem to be sleeping well lately and you know you're late. Put the two things together. It means I have noticed you're late. Don't do it again. But in Australia, if you said to somebody, you're late, don't be late again, or you're out, they'll take it as a direct challenge. It's like fighting talk. <laughs> okay, um, let's see who hasn't read yet. Tough guy, would you like to do a bit of reading? Just a yes. short bit? Yeah, excellent. Don't forget to type mic. To volunteer to read because it's nice if I don't have to ask you. <laughs> okay, so tough guy, here's your sentence. In some cultures, criticism is considered to be necessary, and if you ask for an opinion, you will get it complete with suggestions for improvement. Good, well done. Any idea what culture they might be talking about here? Can you think of any cultures that are like that? How is it in your country? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah, general question, but yes, if you would like to answer, I will zoom in on you. Go on. <laughs> okay, and uh, one second, let me read it again. In some cultures, criticism is considered to be necessary, and if you ask for an opinion, you'll get it complete with suggestions for improvement. Okay, yes, uh, Bob, yes, uh, I think that it, it, it's correct that uh, criticism is considered uh, a necessary thing as the part of the life and uh, uh, you might find it awkward but uh, I'm a person who likes to be criticized I want my critics around me because these people they do help you a lot uh, to improve yourself right uh, because there is a saying that you you should be keeping your friends close and your critics or uh, no 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 uh, sorry the saying is you should be keeping your enemies so I think that I need to amend it today you should be keeping your friends close and your critics closer Okay. okay. They, they they help you to improve your uh, personality as well, right? Because they notice each and everything what you lack. Because a person cannot uh, take notice of their own uh, uh, shortcomings, right? But your critics they do notice each and everything, and they criticize you, and that helps you or tells you that what you lack and what what things are need to be worked on, right? That's okay. It, that's what I have to say. No, that's good. That's interesting as well. I mean, that is a very healthy approach to being criticized. You're, you're treating criticism as feedback on how to do that better next time. Okay. Um, by the way, just feedback for you, tough guy. Closer, not closer. Closer with a z is um, a closer, somebody who closes something in sales, for example. He's a good closer. He always gets the order. But closer with a softus is closer. when you're close to somebody. Don't stand so close to me, as the um, band police would sing, <laughs> okay? Do you want to try it just closer? Okay. Yeah, you need to work on closer. that z. Closer, yeah. It's soft, like soft. Closer. Mm, soft. Closer. <laughs> That's better. That's the one you want. <laughs> okay, work on it. It's difficult, I know, because it's very subtle, but it does differentiate between a closer and to be closer to somebody okay um only positive criticism oh hang on no shine is written definitely not in china yes there's this um losing face yeah losing face very keeping face is very important in china i know this and any criticism you feel like you've lost face then it must be really difficult to run teams and groups in china <laughs> I don't think I'd be up to it. I'm too direct. I'm too much of a, come on, we can work on this. We'll make it better. But, you know, they'll hate me. Hate me. 
Um, so Shiny can't speak to expand on that, but you say only positive criticism, Marco. What do you mean by that? Only positive criticism. Uh, yes, I agree with uh, with uh, a lot, uh, tough guy that uh, um, that uh, it's good to to have person which will uh, uh, try to uh, say uh, something uh, from uh, uh, from which you can uh, extract some messages or some morals or uh, try to correct yourself if it's like a good thing uh, like uh, like you do in you you're maybe criticize at us but it's like uh, uh, it could provide um, some beneficials for for us like uh, that was uh, what was a uh, meant when I wrote uh, a positive criticism because actually there are a lot of uh, just like uh, maybe it's not uh, I didn't express myself um, precisely about terminology I don't know uh, but maybe it's like a negative criticism how I look at it is like uh, maybe when uh, when some people just criticize you and just uh, want to like um, like we said we Mm, we uh, were talking about some uh, someone w uh, when someone want to make someone to feel belittle like uh, to belittle someone to that's true yeah uh, yes and there is a lot of that sign that kind of criticism otherwise like uh, tough guy I completely agree like uh, like you are doing here like uh, you help actually helping us it's I don't know for me, uh, criticism is like you said. Maybe for me, it's like a bad thing. But uh, but actually, if we uh, can find some uh, benefits and it could be uh, good for us, it's uh, I could uh, re uh, rename this <laughs> this criticism in, into some better word. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, especially with the internet, the way it is today, you have to be really careful when you're criticising anybody on the internet, um, even if you've been asked to. I mean, I figure you come here, that's what you want, OK? You're here in a session, you're on the forum, you're on the network, you know what we do, and therefore you're OK with it. Uh, but if I were to go out into Facebook and Twitter, and um, I don't know if you've seen the, the term grammar Nazi... <laughs> That's what I'd get called, honestly. <laughs> Monique, take the mic. Yes, I was thinking about that. Um, yeah, the critics, I mean, especially when it comes to uh, to a business environment. I mean, when, for example, when I need to lead, when I'm leading a group, and I need to talk to them, you know, and I need always. I mean, we need to make a feedback about the work and you know what's positive and what's negative. I think that's hard to do, but I think the best way to do that is just by, for example, if I if I have to talk about lean, so I will always uh, I will always start with the positive things, you know. So yeah, you are doing this and that's great and blah blah blah. But <laughs> I I think that we can improve this process or maybe you are failing doing this or that, you know. I mean, I think it's. Um, I think it works. At least to me, it works. <laughs> so, or for I me, think, it works. Yeah, that's so, good. Uh, Starting with positive is good. I would say I think that we're failing. Yeah. I wouldn't. I'd say, how do you think we could do it better next time? I'd ask it as a question rather than state it as a problem. So what do you think we could do to do even better next time? You know, this worked up to a point. And that's another warning signal, up to a point. In other words, something failed. But rather than using that word fail or but or problem... You know, old boss of mine used to say, don't come to me with problems, come to me with solutions. He'd read a book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is like useless because, you know, if I knew the solution, I wouldn't be working here. I'd be getting more money elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, so you have 10 minutes. Sorry, do you have 10 seconds to say the problem? OK, in the rest, OK, just solve it. OK, yeah. that's your idea. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I do the same. <laughs> OK, uh, Rima, you've asked for the mic. Yes, yes, and uh, it's. Uh, I think that uh, there can be maybe not major, but yes, major problem is like uh, 
uh, I don't know how to say like uh, people who criticize the others. What is their name? Like critics. Critic. Critics. 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 Yeah. Critics. Some of them are paid uh, to do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It can be like. Um, um, I I mean on um, some kind of superiors or managers in I mean for instance in football let's say I think that uh, uh, when they uh, train their uh, football uh, footballers and that they if they have some kind of strict uh, and they uh, uh, they play their also authority or something like it I I think that it can be beneficial maybe some in in. Uh, in some occasions, but I think in rare occasions, because or uh, if your boss is so strict and just criticize about everything, and if you if he or she doesn't uh, explain you how to correct it and just criticize it, uh, it can be just a downside. I think that uh, there can't be any. Uh, bad uh, good results because uh, that uh, um, their subordinates after it uh, became uh, um, afraid of them so uh, they will avoid to uh, to do some t task uh, or assignment because um, because of scare of failure or something like it so they will maybe give up before starting doing anything so it's it's uh, i i like and i like also approach you you have really good approach uh but also my my father i i, I like <laughs> i like his uh, because um he always look uh, optimistic uh at, at everything um like um, find bright side in in everything like uh um, whatever is not not so bad, we will find out time. <laughs> not uh, not give up or not complain too much, but it it could be better after all. Yes. Okay. Well, I agree. I think you'd like this one, Marco. As Abraham Lincoln said, "He has a right to criticize." It applies to she too, uh, who has a heart to help. In other words, don't criticize unless you can help somebody to improve. Um, yeah, parents should criticize but quite often they make the mistake of praising everything and there's a lot of debate about whether you should say to somebody you know your kid brings home something from school and it's rubbish should you tell them <laughs> or should you go oh that's wonderful darling let me put it on the wall <laughs> we'll put it on the fridge <laughs> or should you just say uh, no, no, you need to do better next time. It's a really difficult one. Suffice to say, those of you who were in the session with me about my Tracy Island model, my mother told me fully what she thought of my modelling skills. She did not hold back at all. <laughs> OK, your parents were full of praise or would they tell you if something was rubbish, Monique? <laughs> They will tell me definitely, you know, if I'm doing something <laughs> wrong, if they think that, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> or, uh, you know, that and, and, and I think that is a good approach, you know, it's not about, okay, you are the best, you are the most, uh, I don't know, the best uh, daughter in, I don't know, in, among every, every daughters. It's not about that, you know, okay. So I think my father, oh my God, he's, sometimes he's, he always, you know, try just to, yeah, let's say that to make us better. <laughs> and, uh, feedback. And I think it's part of, part of that is just to, yeah, a bit of feedback every time. You know, you can do that a little bit better or let me show you how to do this next time. You know? Oh, that's good. Or I like it's... that. I like that. My mum never, my mum never showed me how yeah. to make a Tracy Island. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah it's you know parenting skills go on the websites parenting websites they're great for debate and arguments um where people if it's well moderated parenting.com i think it's quite good and mum mum's net i think is quite good as well dads can go on there too and you can get some good conversations going it's well um moderated okay so um Final sentence. Can I have a volunteer? 
Anybody who wants to read before we finish off? Oh, by the way, just as a, a notice, um, sorry, I didn't answer that. I got yeah. sidetracked. Do feel free to criticise me for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the cr criticism considered to be necessary. The country I was talking about was the one I'm living in, Germany. Oh, my goodness, they are so direct as to be rude. <laughs> bit like that in France, too. Uh, but in Germany, it can be quite a culture shock when your boss tells you just how rubbish you really are. <laughs> but they don't like it back. OK, they cannot do. There's something called 360 degree feedback, which I'm a big fan of. But it has to be dealt with very, very carefully. OK, um, you can look it up online if you're interested but don't try it unless you're an expert unless you've had training but it's allowing feedback to come back again so it goes out and it comes back at you um, very useful in project management but it has to be well moderated or you have to have somebody with you who knows how to um, invigilate okay because it can just end up as a fight um, but you know in Germany, no, it's all 180 degree feedback, <laughs> usually top down. So hierarchical bosses criticise workers. Workers have no recourse other than to go home and moan. <laughs> it was a culture shock for me. Yes, even I, I got criticised for laughing too much once. In I was working for an organisation very tightly bound in with Deutsche Bank. Met a lot of bankers there and... Uh, Yes, somebody not even part of the team or anything to do with the project said to me, why are you always laughing? <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Oh, my God. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> that, was so, that was very German, though. It really disturbed her that I laughed all the time. She really wanted to know. I don't know if she wanted to laugh with me. I just laughed, which was not the correct response. But <laughs> Ask me a question like that. I'm going to laugh. Okay, now who volunteered? Traum, was that a yes you'd like to read? <laughs> I'll yes, take anything I, I can I, get. <laughs> yes. Okay, excellent. So, Traum. Oh, no one likes to be criticized, uh, but any direct criticism is really unwelcome. Australians may well react with active or passive res resistance. resistance. The reason lies in the evaluation of criticism. Well done. Re well done. Resistance. Resistance. Okay. resistance. To resistance. resist. Yeah. To resist. The resistance. Yeah. In the war, it's always the <laughs> resistance. <laughs> and resistance in general. Okay. Uh, evaluation okay. though e and then valuation evaluate to evaluate Eva to give evaluation try it evaluation that's it good okay it depends on how people perceive it's all about perception how do they perceive the criticism and sometimes if you admire somebody it's much easier to accept criticism from them because you want to emulate, but if you don't admire your boss, or if you think your boss, if you've got negative attitudes towards your group leader, uh, then it comes very difficult to accept any criticism from them, because you want to give the criticism back. You say, but you're so lazy, you never do anything. You never come up with any suggestions or improvements. You just sit in your office, we never see you. <laughs> Human beings have to learn a lot. Um, yeah, Marco, that's my name. <laughs> Don't wear it out. <laughs> what were you saying, Lynn, for? <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. But, because, but uh, Monique, <laughs> not interrupt, but said, of course, yeah, yeah, I type yes, exactly, Lynn. <laughs> okay. But I, I totally, totally agree because, uh, and uh, what I was thinking about, it's like uh, uh, in some kind of... Uh, in organizations or in some companies or in in everything i i, I mean that it's uh, uh like you said uh but maybe it can be like uh, with uh, with uh, uh, generations like if you 
if you, uh, for, for instance, someone uh, needs a uh, uh, few years to go to retirement and uh, he or she has like a, a superior who is uh, 20 years younger than uh, uh, this person. So it could be problems like uh, maybe in, the, in age uh, difference like uh, oh you are younger 20 years come on don't give me orders or something like yeah it. you young so whippers now it's very on. difficult if somebody is above you and they're younger and less experienced than you are to accept criticism and power as well can cause problems the, the power ratio it's maybe easier to accept criticism from somebody higher up the hierarchy than just your team leader your team leader is meant to support you shouldn't be criticizing you the criticism should come from upper management maybe you might take it more seriously then but yeah that can be really difficult as well I mean I'm very glad I don't work in a supervisory role anymore I found it very stressful <laughs> trying to keep everybody happy oh Rima has Reem has um crashed I thought so it's all right I noticed her white dot disappeared so she's unfortunately offline reem if you watch the recording bye <laughs> anyhow we're going to stop there but i think in any sphere especially as english learners it's very difficult to accept criticism but as english learners you kind of any language learner you have to take it as positive take it as somebody trying to help you unless it's delivered in a non-helpful way as Abraham Lincoln would say if it's just oh learn grammar or learn to spell as you often see on the internet I hate that um, then don't but if you you know if you do get somebody just pointing out that this is spelt in that way or this is pronounced in another way take it as a helpful suggestion rather than a direct attack <laughs> you have to be thick-skinned as a language learner I think Monique, take the mic. You're the last one. Uh, yeah, okay. No, I just wanted to add that, I mean, it's true, and uh, we should be open just to receive critics from, yeah, from almost everyone, I, I would say. But at the same time, I think that we should um, make some difference when it comes to the, the way we say or we tell things. Because there is a thin line, you know, and here I'm talking about respect. Uh, for instance, there are people that they don't know how to say uh, or how to actually, when someone is just telling um, uh, someone else off, you know, I mean, if it's hard if that person uh, doesn't know how to do it, because it's different if I say, okay, you are doing the, the things wrong, but it's different if I say that you are stupid and where is your head, you know what I mean? So I, I think that that is the, the line that sometimes or some people just cross. Yeah. And, um, Teachers especially. And, uh, we will never forget <laughs> if someone... Exactly. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm, I'm talking actually in a business uh, environment. So in those things, you will never forget the way someone uh, have made you feel. So uh, rather than a, just a school, you know. But, uh, but yeah, but if you maybe, uh, if you make someone feel terrible, that person will never forget that. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, again, we've got the power ratio. Teachers have so much power over children, especially at school, not so much at college and university, but they can really traumatise young children by being so obnoxious in their criticism and their marking and everything else and making it personal. I think not a personal attack should never be um, part of criticism. And yet if you read criticism on uh, from critics, people paid to do the job uh, when they criticize films and writing and books and things like that um, and songs and music you know it's vicious absolutely personal attacks on people's appearance sometimes which has got nothing to do with what they're criticizing so I think that's something that humans have got a lot to learn I agree with Tram there <laughs> monster teachers yeah Oh, I had my fair share. Oh, they they taught me a lot. Okay, any monster teachers of mine sitting out there, you taught me a lot. You taught me how not to behave. <laughs> okay, so that's that for this week. Um, Traum had to go, so uh, I hope she didn't crash, Traum. So, 
it happens sometimes try to say goodbye before you go then i know you haven't crashed but um just for next week i've got a little question for you to think about it will be our last maybe our second to last session next week but when might you expect to hear where the bloody hell are you okay <laughs> so it's the use of the language you're welcome leo try to speak next time okay if you come to another session it's good to speak it's good to talk if you just want to listen you can watch the videos <laughs> go on to english radio but really type mic if you would like to speak this isn't a criticism it's a suggestion a bit of feedback for you uh, but these sessions really work well if you start talking and interacting with us a bit more okay but anyway it was nice to see you thank you for joining us and um as i say for next week just think about when you would expect to hear from somebody where the bloody hell are you who might say that to you okay and i'll see some of you i think in google plus in the hangout webinar jam hangout um in 20 minutes 22 minutes i'm going to make a cup of tea now and uh, get things ready just so you know today's topic um is actually being sparked by rima and uh because he asked me what the difference between a hippie and a hipster was so we're going to talk about um these two subcultures hippies and hipsters i don't know if you know anything about them but hopefully by the end of the session you will okay <laughs> see you bye and thanks for coming bye 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 everyone Thanks, bye, see you. Vacation. So uh, I would say that that would be the best way <laughs> just to solve uh, a conflict. Criticism, I think, is another another thing. And as you say, in general, people don't like to be criticized by anyone else. So um, I think that we should be careful about this sort of things because we need to know how to to tell cert, uh, certain things because otherwise we can be offensive or we can just um, hurt someone. So um, I would say that we are, in general, in my country, we are a little bit sensitive. <laughs> so we need to know how to uh, how to say or how to tell things, you know, in order to um, to not harm anyone. So uh, I, for example, uh, I think that some people it's really straightforward when it comes to 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 say a, a critic, but but again, it's, it depends on the person. So sometimes uh, it's it could be or it won't be a problem, but maybe <laughs> if uh, that person is too sensitive, it will cause uh, some troubles. So. It's hard. It's hard just to generalize this uh, this answer. So I would say that I, 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 I don't know. It depends. I would say. It very much depends. But I think. Oh, by the way. Um. So as not to hurt someone. If you hurt someone, it implies physically. Okay. Always. Mm, it can't. Yeah. Um. I don't want to hurt you. It could be. Um, so if you're in a relationship that, and somebody says that to yeah. you, then obviously they don't want to hurt your feelings. But to make it clear, because in an organisation, um, you might have some fussing and fighting. <laughs> so we often add the word feelings just to clarify. We're not talking about, I don't oh, want to beat it. you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I was thinking about her I always, uh, I've heard that, that, there before but yeah you, yeah right. i mean there's the song i didn't want feeling. to hurt you i didn't want to make you cry and we know that that's about relationships exactly. and therefore feelings but if it's not Im implicit that we're talking about relationships and feelings then we say you know you don't want to hurt someone's feelings when you criticize them or when there's conflict especially you'd need to add the word feelings because conflict can be a physical conflict as well um Obviously, you know, that's to be avoided at all times, <laughs> especially in the workplace. OK, uh -huh. so you tend to be a little bit touchy feely then. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I would say that, that in general, I'm trying just to generalize, you know, but uh, I would say that we care about that, you know, I mean, yeah, it's because I think that we are 
yeah, it's like a, we feel everything, you know, like a... uh, they need more than one meetings or so. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think we all should be civilized uh, that we don't, as Monique said, that we don't uh, do any one harm. And uh, but in, in in some groups, especially in in sports or even in uh, in the community. When people are come in the in the office and they are angry because of something, uh, yeah, it it depends uh, on the other uh, the other uh, the other person who works in the in the office. Is he or, or is he, is he or she easy to offend or do they uh, do they hold it or do they um, do they uh, stand? They attacked attacks, you know. People are very different, um, but most of the people are uh, nice and like to uh, to focus to come to a solution for the problem. But some don't. That's very true. I think that's true. true in society as well. Um, now, <laughs> there is a lovely saying um, by Albert Hubbard, okay, uh, which I agree with. And um, I think what you wrote, what you said about in a community, I and mean, I try very hard not to criticize, but of course, as the teacher. Because we are passionate about everything. So if you say something against me, I'll take a look, not like, a, you know, you want to, I don't know, to make a good critic, but maybe you want to, I don't know, to, I don't know, to damage me and somehow, you know. So anyway, I, I think uh, in general, I, I would say that it's pretty much what we are the way we are okay i mean yeah you i mean in any organization there has to be some kind of criticism in how you deal with people nobody can be brilliant all the time uh, and that can the criticism can lead to conflict or just a clash of personalities can lead to conflict my hubby always says if you're a real professional you can work with anybody doesn't mean you like them you don't have to like them but you need to be able to work with them vice versa as well they need to be able to work with you if you're a professional um traum uh, my <clears throat> contribution to this theme would be if a person is not ready um to uh, get to the point of a solution then it is it is a uh, very uh, difficult to get uh, to satisfy uh, the whole group, you know. Oh. Some people they even don't like to uh, to get a, they come to get, to come to a result. I mean, um, uh, yeah, maybe they are not ready. Maybe, maybe. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay. So uh, last week I left you with a question. Can anybody remember the question? <laughs> Monique, take the mic. It was um, how do you deal with conflict and criticism in your culture? Yeah, all the fussing and fighting. How do you deal with it? Nobody likes to be criticized. Most people apart from tough guy here, uh, don't like conflict. <laughs> How do you deal with it in your culture? And then we'll discuss uh, some aspects of Australian culture. I say aspects because, of course, we're dealing with people, individuals, but there is a, a general consideration in Australia. So, Monique, you, answered the, you asked the question, which is kind of the answer to my question. Um, did you think about it? Have you had any ideas? Uh, is it an issue? Yeah, actually, it's a, it is, but uh, but also it's not an easy question to to answer because I mean it's hard. <laughs> I mean because always it depends on the on the person. So uh, I would say that we we know that we uh, the best way to to solve a conflict. Okay, starting from conflict. It's by talking to that person uh, through communication.